To get the latest voting rights and election news, subscribe to Democracy Docket's free daily and weekly newsletter at democracydocket.com backslash YouTube subscribe. The sign-up link is also in the description below. Nowhere is democracy on the docket right now like it is in Wisconsin. Republican lawmakers are on a mission to take a sledgehammer to Democratic norms and processes. The Democratic leader of the Wisconsin Assembly, Representative Greta Neubauer, is here to explain it all. This is Defending Democracy, a weekly podcast from Democracy Docket. Welcome, Leader Neubauer. Thank you so much. Great to be here, Mark. So, Leader, um, you have been in the Wisconsin Assembly representing Racine since 2018 and in leadership since 2022. Boy, during that time, Wisconsin has gone through a lot of turmoil, uh, particularly, uh, though not exclusively, in the issues related to democracy. Uh, how do you, as a longtime resident of the state and in politics, how do you kind of make sense of it all? How do you make sense of like the Scott Walker era, you know, up to the present? Well, it's a big question. Um, Wisconsin certainly has been through a lot. I was a freshman in college watching the Act 10 protests in an economics class. Um, and now, of course, I'm here uh, just across from the Capitol where we, where we do our work every day. Wisconsin has been a national testing ground for right-wing policy. And I believe that started around the time of Act 10. We saw you know, massive Koch brothers engagement, investment in Wisconsin with Scott Walker. We saw um, multiple, you know, ways that they undermined voting rights in Wisconsin, you know, and they're continuing to do that today. You know, the fight on ballot drop boxes continues. We've seen um, we've seen one of the worst gerrymanders in the country be implemented here and be profoundly shaping not only the legislature, but Wisconsin politics as a whole for 12 years seen powers stripped away from our governor and attorney general shortly after they were elected. And we saw a Supreme Court be one vote away from an attempt to undermine the results of the 2020 election, legislators, you know, engaging in, in the efforts to um, try to uh, get Trump to the White House, you know, for a second term as well. So we have just seen everything in Wisconsin, and we have seen national interests engage here and try to test out the most egregious efforts to undermine our democracy and hold on to power for Republicans, despite the will of the people. And we are seeing that again in this moment with threats to impeach newly elected Justice Protosawitz um, and efforts by legislative Republicans to hold on to their illegitimate majorities. Do you think it's something you, I mean, we've seen this nationally, right? We've seen uh, sort of the, the the MAGA Republicans sort of take over the Republican Party, but it feels like it happened earlier in Wisconsin. Uh, and it feels like, you know, Scott Walker was kind of like a leading indicator of, of what was to come. Do you think it's, there's something unique in Wisconsin? Do you think it is uh, just sort of part and parcel of a national movement? Is it some combination of it? I mean, I do note that Wisconsin does seem to have a unusually large number of conservative billionaires uh, mm -hmm. that, that like to spend money, uh, you know, in promoting the most extreme form of republicanism. Yeah. I mean, I, I do think that it's it's national and local, right? We certainly have a number of conservative billionaires who saw a real opportunity here to try to enact a policy agenda that meant that they got to keep more and more uh, of, their, of their earnings and their corporations were taxed less and less. Um, you know, again, I, I do just think that what we've seen here is a recognition that Wisconsin is often the tipping point state in presidential elections. Um, the path to the majority in Congress and the Senate runs through Wisconsin as well. And so it does seem like there was just um, a, a recognition for the right that that trying to influence Wisconsin politics at all levels, trying to um, keep people from the ballot box, trying to um, remove nonpartisan election officials, right, who are doing a good job. I know we'll talk some more about what's going on for Megan Wolf right now. 
um, is 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 worth the pain for them, right? They, the people of Wisconsin, see what's going on. They know what's going on. But Republicans seemingly have decided that if they are able to keep their gerrymandered majorities, they don't care. Uh, about the people of Wisconsin recognizing that they are willing, the Republicans are willing to undermine their votes and um, ignore widely popular policies, right, and prevent access to reproductive rights if they're able to hold on to their power. So you mentioned um, Megan Wolf, so I want to turn to uh, to what is really a bizarre uh controversy, but maybe one that uh, epitomizes the Republican extremism in Wisconsin. For those people who don't know, the Wisconsin elections are overseen not by the Secretary of State's office, but by a bipartisan um, uh, election commission called the Wisconsin Election Commission. And Megan Wolf is its uh, its election director who, and Megan Wolf drew, you know, plaudits and uh uh, you know, congratulations from around the country for running smooth elections. So what, tell us what has happened with, in the Megan Wolf situation, which of all the situations one should have, it should not involve the executive director of a bipartisan agency. Right. So the context, of course, for what has happened is that since 2020 and, you know, to some degree before we have seen Republicans in legislature at the state level here spreading misinformation about what happened in that election and undermining the integrity of our elections by um, by sharing you know these falsehoods. And now they feel that they need a scapegoat, right? And and they have chosen Megan Wolf. And as you said, she has run a professional operation. She has run free and fair elections in Wisconsin with no, you know, widespread allegations of issues. Um, I should say no, no actual issues, right, um, that are widespread in Wisconsin. And so what we have here is Republican legislators recognizing that they have fed this misinformation to their base, and now their base wants to see something from them, Right. Uh, but the reality is that the that the elections in Wisconsin are well run, right? And and we do have a great agency here, the Wisconsin Elections Commission, um, that is doing good work. And Megan Wolf has has run has run a great operation. So um, now we are seeing Republicans in the state Senate attempt to remove her from her post, and I would say that that is because they recognize that there are elections coming. Right. And they want someone in that position who they are able to influence um, and perhaps bully. Right. When when and if they believe they need to um, in order to get their way in how elections are run in Wisconsin. And we know that Republicans want to limit access to early voting, to absentee voting. They want to make it harder for people in Wisconsin to vote. And they they have done that to some extent and they want to continue to do that going forward. Megan Wolf will do everything she can to provide Wisconsinites access to the ballot box, and Republicans are threatened by that and are taking um, you know, illegal actions to try to remove her from the post when the Wisconsin Elections Commission has not um, forwarded on her nomination to the Senate. It can get a little wonky, but the reality is that they, are, they, they pulled a political stunt in the Senate last week in attempting to remove her from her position. Um, you know, when when her nomination is not properly before the body. So I have to ask you this, because, uh, you know, I, I, for those people who don't know, they just had elections in 2022. And Ron Johnson, who is, by the way, like a lead conspiracy theorist in the U.S. Senate, like even by U.S. Senator standard, Republican Senator standards, he's a crazy conspiracy theorist, but he won the election, right? I mean, I supported the Democrat, you supported the Democrat, but he won. How do they square the idea <laughs> that, that, you know, that they, they just won this very important election on the one hand, and on the other hand, they want to spread conspiracy theories about the woman who has been widely credited on a bipartisan basis, on a national basis, with administering free and fair elections? I would say there's very little effort to try to sort of square that circle, right? I mean, 
what we have seen is Republican legislators cry foul um, in elections where they have also won, right? And have no acknowledgement that there were, um, that, that it would raise questions about their own election if they really believe um, that there was that there was fraud or, or other um, foul play in those elections. We just see very selective, um, you know, selective memory and and an effort here not to try to present a credible, real <laughs> uh, set of information about the election, but an effort just to kind of assuage the base and and whip up enough fear that it justifies their efforts to restrict out access to the ballot box, you know, put in place people who will bow to their whims and set up a context for them to try to undermine election results that they don't like in the future. Well, uh, we I think that this effort is not going to succeed. For those of you who have been following this, you know there's a lawsuit that it was filed by the Attorney General, Josh Call, uh, on behalf of the Wisconsin Election Commission and Megan Wolf to prevent this from happening. But I, I want to turn to another topic because, um, Leader, this is actually not the craziest thing going on in the state of Wisconsin. Like, you would think the removal of the nonpartisan election administrator who is credited with running smooth elections, removing her for no reason, or actually they can't remove her. So engaging in political theater to try to remove her would be the craziest thing that the uh, Republicans in Wisconsin are trying. But I have to say, um, of all of the crazy things and terrible things for democracy going on in America, the craziest and the most terrible is actually going in Wisconsin with respect to the state Supreme Court. So can you bring everyone up to date, start from the beginning, what the heck is going on with the Republicans and the state Supreme Court? Yes, well, the beginning starts a long time ago, but I will do my best. Um, so the state Supreme Court has, of course, made several really important decisions in Wisconsin over the past many years, and they have been involved in redistricting in Wisconsin as well, particularly now that we have divided government, Democratic governor, Republican legislatures. And what we have seen um, is the court need to engage in, in those um, in the last round of redistricting. And what we have in Wisconsin at this moment are some of the most gerrymandered maps in the entire country. Um, this is this is made clear by, you know, several nonpartisan audits and, and efforts to explain how Wisconsin's efficiency gap, right, the amount of voters who participate in an election and essentially do not contribute to a competitive election and outcome. And just, to, and just so that people can visualize this in numbers. So let's just assume for purposes that Wisconsin is a 50-50 state. Okay. It's roughly, I, I'd argue it's actually more democratic than 50-50, but let's just, for sake of simplicity, say it's a 50-50 state. That would mean that you would assume the legislature would be about 50-50. So how close to that are we in Wisconsin? Oh, we are not close. We are not close, Mark. So the state Senate has a supermajority of Republicans, two thirds, and we are just two seats away from that in the state assembly. So 64 Republicans, 235 Democrats. And as so you that's can a, all, so that's how so that's how gerrymandered it is. Exactly. And this and these results, right, came out of an election where every other statewide election was decided by just a couple of points, right? So it is obvious to everyone in Wisconsin and everyone who is paying attention here that the gerrymander is um, is incredibly uh, deep and it is impacting these legislative elections in a profound way. It makes it um, really difficult for us to be able to compete for a majority. Some would say almost impossible, right, under these maps for Democrats to get a majority, even if we were to win the state um, overwhelmingly in terms of total votes. So what we have here is in, in April, Justice Janet Protasiewicz was on the ballot and she won the election uh, in what is no question a landslide in Wisconsin, 11 percentage points. That does not happen in Wisconsin very often, right? Uh, again, almost every election decided by just a couple of points, very, very close to 50. 
So Justice Janet is is sworn into office and very quickly Republicans realize that they have a problem because they have done everything they can um, to try to prevent themselves from being held accountable, both on these gerrymandered maps and, of course, on widely popular policy issues like reproductive rights. And they see that there's going to be a challenge, right, to these gerrymandered maps. They see that there is going to be a case moving forward um, to restore abortion access in Wisconsin long term. And they start looking for an escape hatch. And they decide that what they are going to do is threaten to impeach Justice Protosawitz. Now, Wisconsin has a pretty high standard for what is needed to impeach an elected official, right? You need to um, have misconduct or, or a crime, right? Of course, no such uh, allegations exist here for Justice Janet. What Republicans are saying is that she talked about some issues on the campaign trail. Of course, uh, Supreme Court justices in Wisconsin have been talking about their personal beliefs about issues. We've got a whole lot of conservative uh, members of the Supreme Court who have made their personal beliefs about abortion very clear, right? Um, and that there were um, partisan interests that spent money on her behalf in, in the state Supreme Court election, which of course has been happening for many years. The conservative justices on the Supreme Court um, also have seen Republican uh, party spending on their behalf. And so Republicans, uh, again, seeing that their, their illegitimate hold on power here in Wisconsin um, have started to threaten to impeach Justice Protosawitz. And then what we have seen in response- and, she, and, and, she, and just to be clear so that everyone understands, she flipped control of the court, right? Yes. What we, what we see now is um, a fair court, right? A court that we believe um, would take a real look at the merits of the case on gerrymandering, on um, reproductive rights, on a number of issues coming in front of the court. And so um, in our body, in the assembly, we have Speaker Robin Voss, um, who has been part of many of these efforts um, to consolidate power and hold on to control, um, say that they're considering impeaching Justice Janet if she doesn't recuse from the uh, gerrymandering case that is, that is going to be in front of the court. And then as a result of that, we have seen people across the state and across the country um, make their voices heard. They have made very clear, um, I know my Republican colleagues have gotten a lot of phone calls and a lot of emails um, from people across the state who said, I voted for Justice Janet and I want her to be able to serve her term. She was elected to do so and you attempting to nullify my vote from the April election is, is unacceptable. And so I hope that they are hearing that message, but of course we are still squarely in the middle um, of this saga and we are going to see just how far Republicans are willing to go to attempt to hold on to these illegitimate majorities in the legislature and um, you know, undermine the will of the people. So I have to say uh, we have seen the abuse of political power throughout this country by Republicans. You know, the, the thought of Republicans impeaching President Biden in the House is, you know, ridiculous. But they are literally threatening to impeach a justice who has not yet ruled on a case. She literally hasn't done anything, and they are already talking about impeachment. I mean, this is like just, this is not an impeachment, everyone. This is a nullification of an election. There was an election. They don't like the results of the election. And before she even does anything, they are talking about impeaching her. Yeah. And it's it's really interesting, right? I I um I will say just sort of being inside of the Capitol, right, and seeing all of this unfold, it of course is unthinkable and completely unprecedented that legislators would try to nullify the results of an election. Um, here for another branch of government because they do not like the results, right? I should point out that the Republican Assembly Campaign Committee directly contributed to Justice Protosay with his opponent, right? Um, there's so much hypocrisy here. But it is, I think, really just exemplifies what the gerrymander has done 
to Republican leadership in Wisconsin. They have been so insulated from, um, from again, from the will of the voters and from the consequences of their actions. And they simply do not know how to respond to the people of Wisconsin pushing back. And I, they're feeling it. They're feeling the people of Wisconsin pushing back right now. They are feeling, um, again, uh, uh, accountability perhaps coming for their actions, and they just do not know what to do. Yeah, and I think it's important to clarify for people who you know, maybe listening and say, well, but why are justices talking about issues before they're elected? That there's a legitimate debate to be had in this country about whether or not we ought to elect judges. I personally don't think we ought to elect judges. I think we ought to have appointed judges. I think that it would be perfectly reasonable for Speaker Voss to say, you know what, let's just let the governor appoint uh, uh, justices and Governor Ever could Evers could appoint uh, whoever uh, he thought fit. But that isn't the system we have in America. The fact is, in most states in this country, we do elect judges. And when you elect judges, you are necessarily going to elect people who are going to campaign, and they're going to talk about what their philosophy is, what they think is the direction that the law should take. By the way, this is not all that different than what happens oftentimes in confirmation proceedings where, you know, during the Trump administration, you had a lot of Federalist Society uh, now judges saying, yeah, I think this is wrong and I think this is wrong. Like, that's sort of part of the system. And the idea that you will impeach a justice over that, as opposed to, you know, bribery or something, is just crazy. Yeah. It's just crazy. And as you say, it is one branch of government nullifying the elections of another branch. Could you imagine if the liberal majority on the Supreme state Supreme Court nullified the elections of the state legislature? You are absolutely right. I mean, what we're seeing right now, again, it is it is unprecedented. And if they believe, if conservatives, if Republicans here in the legislature believe that they can get away with this, it opens the door in the future to Republicans deciding that they are going to impeach a justice on the state Supreme Court because they worry about how they're going to rule in a, in a Trump 2024 case, right? So we just have to be so, so clear. Wisconsin is once again a testing ground. They are trying to see if they are going to be able to get away with threats to impeach a justice for no <laughs> real reason. And if they're allowed to get away with this, Republican legislators are allowed to get away with this in Wisconsin, it will not only fundamentally shape Wisconsin, but it will also have national implications because Republican legislators in other states, watch what happens here, right? They, they see, and they will try to do this in their states as well. So I have to ask the question I've been been waiting to talk to you about. There's one big question I have, you know, and it comes out of my observations of what uh, Republican legislatures have done elsewhere. For example, you know, in Alabama, where they're essentially defying a court order about uh, drawing a second majority black district, people have said, you know, what's going on in Alabama? And my, my belief is that it is more about political theater. They want to be able to tell their base that they're doing this. They don't actually believe it. You know, they don't, they, they, they just, they, they don't believe they're complying with the court's order. They just want to be able to tell their, their base voters that they don't. So it's kind of a two part question. The first is, do you think Voss would actually go through with this? Like, or do you think this is just the theater of like feeding his base? And the second is, I, I know they're on the other side of the aisle, but you, it's, you know, it's a small legislature. You must know your Republican colleagues. Do you think they believe this or do you think this, that this is, again, just like political theater for their base? So to the first question about Robin Voss, you know, it is it's it's, of course, a little hard to say. <laughs> Um, I, of course, have heard Robin Voss um, talk about how he wants to have uh, bipartisan relationships, how he wants to have a legislature with integrity. But I also know that they are absolutely desperate to hold on to power. And so I think there's an, a struggle going on over there, right? I do think that many Republicans recognize that impeaching Janet would be crossing a line that they can never walk back. But they also 
see um, the that the people of Wisconsin are about to have an opportunity to hold them accountable. And they're absolutely terrified. And in speaking to, you know, our colleagues on the other side of the aisle and sort of um, hearing, you know, their comments about, about the impeachment, there are members of the Republican caucus who understand that impeaching Justice Janet is going too far, right? We have seen a few make that comment publicly, recognize that she has not committed a crime, um, and I think more of them who simply do not want to have to take this vote because they know that it will be the defining vote of their career. Right. And they will be held accountable for that for the rest of their time in public office um, and that they will be responsible for permanently undermining the integrity of the legislature and our democracy as a whole in Wisconsin. And so I do hope, um, you know, that those voices prevail. And that they recognize that they are just simply going to have to see what happens in the courts and they're going to have to compete and they're going to have to try and win over the people of Wisconsin, you know, to their positions. Um, but it is absolutely a threat. And I do think um, that we we could see them move forward if they feel that that is their their only path to hold on to their gerrymandered maps. Yeah, I think that's, you know, I never, I, no one's, um, no one's gotten rich uh, uh, betting in favor of Republicans doing the right thing. <laughs> so like when you reach the fork of the road and you say, will Republicans do the right thing or the political expedient thing, you, you've pretty much always uh, been right if you've bet on the political expedient thing. Uh, let me ask you a broader question, though. Uh, it's clear that the Republican Party of Wisconsin will do anything it can to stay in power, right? Their goal is to wield majority power with a minority of popular support, which is what they're currently doing in the state of Wisconsin and elsewhere. And they face changing demographics that are going to make that harder and harder. What do you say to your voters, right? We've talked a lot about what the Republicans are hearing and, you know, making sure we keep pressure on them. But what do you say to the Wisconsinite, you know, who's a Democrat or a moderate or a swing voter or maybe a Republican, but thinks this is all crazy, says, you know, wh why do I participate in a process that's so rigged? Like, yeah. what, what hope is there for me to even be involved in politics? Yeah, it's such a good question. And, and I will say that pretty much as soon as I took office, you know, going on six years ago, it became clear to me that one of the most important things I could do in this role was to demonstrate to people why it mattered for them to continue to engage, right? Um, people had been in the fight for a long time. You know, um, Act 10 was many years ago now, and it has been a really difficult time um, to be someone who believes in democracy in Wisconsin for the past 12 years. And what I will say is that it is hard, right, to um, impact the, the proceedings of the state legislature right now, right? People feel that showing up to a committee hearing um, might not impact the outcome in the way that it would uh, in a state where democracy was real, right? And where we didn't have a gerrymander that essentially locked us into one party control, regardless of, of the, the votes of people in our districts. And what we have seen just in the last few weeks is that people reaching out and letting their legislators know that they will not stand for the impeachment of a Supreme Court justice has shifted the conversation in the Capitol, right? And there have been a number of fights that I've been part of since I, um, you know, started in this work where, where people's engagement really did matter, right? It really matters that Governor Evers is in office. It really matters that we prevented a Republican supermajority in the assembly by two votes. Because if that was not the case, we would just see Republican one party rule continuing in the state of Wisconsin. And that just that doesn't just impact policy, right? That doesn't just impact the people here. It truly impacts uh, the outcome of presidential elections and, and control um, in Congress, and it impacts our, our democracy. So what I say to people, and I think what people here really do understand, is that this battle is long, 
and it is hard. And it is also not just about this moment. It is about whether our democracy is real in Wisconsin and in this country. And we have so much power here to be able to shape the way that this country goes, right? We are entering another election cycle of Donald Trump. And I know how scary that is for people here and across the country. And I also know that in Wisconsin, we have an outsized ability to make a difference um, in, in the direction that our country is headed. And I do think people understand that. And I feel just so grateful to be able to um, play my little part in all of this and find a way to engage meaningfully in a moment of you know, existential threats um, to, to our republic. Leader Greta Neubauer, thank you for joining us. You are a hero for democracy. You know, it is easy for people to engage in politics when um, when they are uh, able to effectuate change easily. You know, it is hard for people to run up against political gerrymanders, to run up against a machine, a billionaire funded machine that is aiming to undermine democracy, free and fair elections, and a better and more just society. And the fact that you have given your career, uh, at least so far, to that fight and to not giving up and fighting every day against long odds um, really, like I said, makes you a hero. So thank you very much for joining us on Defending Democracy. And please don't be a stranger. Come back uh, anytime. Thank you so much, Mark. Thank you for all that you are doing to continue these important conversations across the country. It is essential work, and we are so grateful. Thanks for listening to Defending Democracy. If you enjoyed today's episode, please leave us a review. To find out more and stay up to date on the latest voting rights and election news, visit democracydocket.com and make sure you are subscribed to our daily and weekly newsletters. We'll see you next time. Today's episode was produced by Paige Moskowitz and Gabby Corporal. It was edited by Paige Moskowitz. Defending Democracy is a production of Democracy Docket, LLC.